Hello guys, welcome scoundrels, welcome back to the channel, hope you're doing well. I'm on holiday, I'm in my room, you can see Rupert probably just over my right shoulder. Uh, making a complete- No Rupert, don't put the waffle on the bed! Rupert, are you going to eat the waffle? Don't put it on the bed. Daddy has to, Daddy has to sleep on that side. Um, he's pulling a waffle out. We got a waffle for breakfast and he's just throwing it around all over the place. Uh, so yeah, apologies. This is, this is going to be a little bit of a... Oh my, he's just thrown it off the bed. This is going to be a bit of a zoo video, but I'm going to try and get through it as quickly as possible. Um, first of all, uh, thank you for subscribing if you are a subscriber. And if you'd like to be a subscriber, uh, there is a subscription box right below my face. Um, I want to give a shout out to... Well, I wanted to give a shout-out to Reaper, but I also want to give a shout-out to Broker for this particular video. Um, he is from Valhalla, and he is an industry member, and he doesn't really get much many shout-outs, but he actually provided me with the mower for this video. So, um, uh, Broker made me the mower for the video. Uh, thanks to Bojangles, the CEO, for hooking me up, and I'm very, very grateful for him. Don't tell him that I actually lost that mower, and had to because I disconnected and had to get a, a new one given to me by the devs, but we... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We, we, we have those issues. Come on, come on then, Reaper. Okay, do you, want to, do you want to come to Daddy? Okay, you want to come to Daddy. All right. Okay, so what are we talking about in today's video? We're going to be covering the mower and the shield tanking version of the mower, which you can see right here. Uh, what I'm going to show you is is the fittings, but I'm also just going to quickly display to you. Now, reactive shield hardeners, hardeners work in battle, so you're not going to see the full effect from it right now. Um, but if I activate all of my shield hardening equipment, I'm going to get up towards up towards 27,000 uh, effective HP on my shield in total. Uh, and then obviously, if I was fighting against EM, which is the lowest natural shield resistance, I could be pushing that up towards 80%. And I was getting around 33,000 versus uh, laser uh, rats in the MR space with this particular build. So it's a very, very strong build, having a very high effective HP. And so now we're going to talk a little bit about the fittings and what you should be looking to consider. Because there are several different ways of doing this. And again, I saw this from a Reddit post and decided to play it myself. Uh, and I've really been enjoying it so far. Much slower than the, the Navy Caracal in terms of clearing. But also, if you're clearing out in Nullsec where there are not many stations, you can keep yourself healthier and you won't have to waste time going back to another system to repair. Because you're able to tank out... Uh, and tank waves much more effectively in this particular in this particular build. So let's go through the fittings now and talk a little bit about why I've chosen particular fittings. And then we're going to go through a little example of me running a tier 7 anomaly. So whilst we're on fittings, I'm going to talk a little bit about the mower as a cruiser. It is a Tech 6 cruiser. And as you can see, it has... Uh, Percentage shield resistance based on your shield operation bonus level, um, which essentially, or shield operation level. So you're going to get upwards of 20% natural shield resistances just by having shield operation at level 5, which if you're running shield tanks, you should be having anyway. And cruiser command bonus, so not even the advanced versions, you're going to get 5% medium railgun damage with 5% uh, medium railgun accuracy fall off. And what the accuracy fall off refers to is the distance at which... Uh, from the optimal range, you essentially can keep yourself accurate at. So if you increase your accuracy fall off by, actually, yeah, if you can keep, increase your accuracy fall off by 25%, you're essentially going to increase the distance at which you can still hit shots by a significant margin. So this takes the uh, the range to upwards of like you can still hit you can still hit shots at upwards of 40 kilometers with this particular build. Your accuracy will be very poor, but you can still hit shots, especially on the bigger ships. Um, you know, upwards of 40 kilometers, although it's not the optimal range to, to function at. Um, if I go down and show you the, um, the skills that you need here as well, you benefit from cruiser command and advanced cruiser command, obviously. Um, cruiser defense upgrade, very, very important because you're going to get a significant shield bump by having cruiser defense upgrade there. Cruiser engineering is always going to be useful, so any of the cruiser skills are going to be great. Target management is obviously great uh, here as well. And obviously, because we are dealing with railguns, you want to go to, you're going to want to have medium railgun operation, advanced medium railgun operation, medium railgun upgrade, and advanced medium railgun upgrade. And those are the skills that are primarily primarily going to give you the best bonuses when it comes to when it comes to uh, the mower. What on earth are you doing, Rupert? You're eating. No, I'm going to take that off you because that's actually your tube of toothpaste that he's got in his mouth. Uh, right, so let's talk a little bit about the fittings now. Yes, we are full-time dad in a hotel YouTubing right now. Uh, all right, Rupert, let's go through the fittings together, hey? So let's start with the high fittings. 
Uh, I've got a Federation Navy medium railgun attached. There are actually two options to consider when dealing with this, and I've actually considered both of them, and feel free to have discussion about this in the comments. Obviously, you get railgun bonuses in the mower, so it is, is naturally going to sort of uh, uh, levy you towards railguns. Now, you have two railgun options, which are the Navy medium, uh, or rather just rifled railguns, which give you the extra range, um, and the extra range fall off, so you're a bit more accurate at a wider spread of ranges. Um, but obviously the DPS is lower, and also against smaller frigates and smaller destroyers, you are going to struggle because of tracking, because the tracking speed of these particular um, uh, railguns are not particularly good, so therefore keeping yourself at range is, is, is preferable. And the mower is a slow ship, so you can get closed, the distance can get closed very easily by frigates, especially if they have afterburners. So one of the things that you will find being a major issue for you if you're running uh, rifled railguns like I am here, is you are going to struggle if someone closes the, 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 the range on you, which is why you've got these weather fires, and also why I've got the, the small drone, which I'll talk about in a moment. But you can have Mark V, Rifled railguns, and you won't see a huge difference in terms of DPS. You should, st st should still be able to hit somewhere around the 200 mark with Mark V rifled railguns. Uh, and you, again, it will still do the job necessary. It will just take a little bit longer to get through. The other railgun option you have is snub nose. And I was actually using snub nose for a bit. The problem with snub nose is you have the opposite problem. The larger ships, which are very good at maintaining distance on you because you're a slow ship, um, they, you know, it's difficult to get into the range of, of running snub nose. And the problem is that if I was running snub nose, I'd probably want to run an afterburner. And if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna run an afterburner, I have to sacrifice somewhat on my on my low slots, which is another thing that we can talk about and we can discuss. Um, the other option, so actually, I kind of misspoke. I actually had three options. So you have rifled railguns, which give you range and greater range accuracy fall off. Snub nose railguns, which are going to give you higher DPS, but are more constricting on the range, but are better at dealing with frigates, slightly less so on cruisers and battle cruisers that are going to be able to keep distance on you. The other um, uh, weapon to consider is actually just going missiles. If you have got good missile skills, one of the things that I think um, can work very well on the mower, and I am tempted to try it myself, is running rapid medium missile launches. Now, you don't get many, many bonuses from the mower. You get no bonuses from the mower in terms of rapid medium missile launches. But you should be able to have an effective range of about 20 or so kilometers. Um, with those rapid medium missiles. Your DPS will be lower than the Caracal, but you're also considerably more tanky than the Caracal. And also, there is no minimum range for missiles, and there is no range fall-off. So, something to consider for the, the high slots is potentially having rapid medium missiles here, because they actually alleviate some of the issues that railguns have, which is that accuracy fall-off and that tracking, that tracking issues. Um, it is something that I think can work and I'm tempted to try it myself. In fact, I probably will go and end up trying it because it just it also nullifies the need for a web, a web of fire realistically. Oh no, it doesn't really nullify the you still want to use web of fires, I think, with missiles because you're gonna get a better damage application. But no, nonetheless, missiles are another um, weapon to consider. You just don't get the advantages of some of the mower as a cruiser with the with the the, the, the range fall off and the um, and the damage bonus, but it's sometimes, you know, you're going to have more consistent DPS application anyway with missiles, so it's definitely something to consider. Uh, I'm running with railguns just because of the bonus right now, and I wanted a sort of a different play style to missiles, but I think with the, the range that you're going to find yourself at for the majority of the time with your crew, with your mower, actually missiles could be a, a valid option, especially if you have the, the proper missile training skills like I do. Okay, mid slots. Um, honestly, both of these are stasis weather flyers because a double stasis weather flyer application to a, a quick frigate will allow you to get more consistent damage application uh, and build a bit more distance from you and that frigate when using these uh, these railguns. I would recommend getting the best stasis weather fire that you can afford because the the higher tier stasis weather fires have generally got longer range of application. But I'm just using Mark Fives because I don't have any money. I lost all my money, so there you go. Uh, drone. I would recommend a small drone, even though you have a medium drone slot. The reason being is that the small drones are going to be better at dealing more consistent damage to frigates. Um, and especially for frigates trying to get under the range of your railguns and get under the tracking speed, the small drone will be a, good, a better way of applying damage more consistently. But you can have a medium drone as well. Completely up to you. Uh, in terms of low slots, now this is where there is definitely some discussion to be had. You definitely want a shield booster because that is going to be a way for you to keep your... Um, to keep your, your shields healthy, especially when you're taking a large amount of damage. You're going to want at least one reactive and one adaptive shield hardener, okay? Because that's gonna give you uh, a good solid base of defenses with the adaptive shield hardener, and then you're gonna have a good, um, essentially reactive 
you, this is going to be a good reactive uh, shield hardener for fighting the certain types of enemies that you're going to be going up against, and especially especially useful versus electromagnetic damage, where you're going to need the extra boost in resistances because shields are naturally weak to it. Rupert's now under the bed. Um, this is There is now some discussion to be had around the capacitor battery and the second adaptive shield hardener that I'm running. Capacitor battery might not always be necessary, but I find that it is a very good uh, way to essentially get some free shield boosting out. So I usually pop this at the start of the fight, plus the fact that railguns run off your capacitor. It's always nice to have the extra ability to sort of get a couple of railgun shots off out if you're getting drained. And it's a bit of a get out of jail free card. Um, the other thing about missiles is they don't draw from capacitor. So again, you can fire missiles even when your capacitor is getting drained, which is one of the other bonuses of it. This adaptive sh shield hardener, so you, obviously when you equip two, you're going to get what's called a stacking penalty. That stacking penalty means you're going to get a 50% reduction in the bonus of the shield damage resist resistances. So you're going to get about 16% from your second adaptive invulnerability field, uh, which means you don't need to run as high tier one because you're not going to get as many resist resistances out of it. You could run very easily a Mark V and it would be perfectly fine. I just had these ones lying around. The discussion to be had is, do you want to run a damage control system instead? So when it comes to a damage control system, it's going to give you a base set of resistances across all of your defense layers, which includes your shield, your armor, and your hull. Um, and then it, that, that's a passive, and then you're going to be able to activate it for a very large burst of defensive capability, which will last usually about 12 or 13 seconds, and then it will go on a 150 second cooldown. So you're only going to get it for a very small amount of time. So it really depends on what you think is more useful. It does not draw from your capacitor to have those base res resistances. You'll get about half, you get about, I think you get about 9%. So I get 16% from my adaptive invulnerability field, and it has an activation cost of 26 joules, so it will draw around just under 1% of my capacitor every time it activates, every 12 seconds, but I'll get 8% extra re resistances on my main shield barrier, which is my, obviously my shield. However, if I was to go for a base control system, I'll get the res res resistances across the board, and I'll have the ability to activate during very high damage periods, which is, can be good for trying to find a way to warp out. It's really up to you, depends on your play style. Um, and I think both of them are very viable options. I've tried both and I've found minimal difference, um, but I would say that maybe a damage control system on, ch on testing is better because the capacitor draw can be an issue versus certain types of mobs, especially if they're running en energy neutralizers. So you might want to consider having the base damage resistances of the damage control system there as well. But both of them work very well. Um, I find that I get more effective HP out of a second adaptive shield hardener because the shields are the majority of my, uh, of my resistances. So when it comes to rigs, you have options. Either you go for shield tanking rigs, which can increase your base res resistances and increase the, um, the shield boosting capability, which I think is something to consider. Or you can go for uh, offensive rigs. Now, I've gone for offensive rigs because for the, the type of um, anomalies that I'm running, I don't need any extra tanking capabilities. But you may want to consider having defensive shield rigs uh, on your, your rigging slots. Now, so if you were to go for the overall percentage shield boost rigging, that would give you a massive effective hit point, hit point gain with the adaptive shield hardeners. Um, you could also go for the increasing the shield boost amount or reducing the draw of the shield booster on your capacitor, which will allow you to be more effective with your tanking strategies. Both of these are very viable options. Um, or you can go for what I've gone, which is the railgun collision and the burst aerator, which is going to increase your DPS. Now, it increased my DPS by about 50, um, and so you'll find that you'll get a big DPS increase. Uh, and again, you can offset... Um, DPS and defenses in the sense that if your DPS is higher, you're going to be killing rats more quickly, so therefore your defenses won't get hit as hard, but the same thing applies. If you're killing them slower, but you can tank more, then you're probably going to have the same output. I, I went for the clear speed option because I didn't feel like I needed any extra defenses with about 30k effective hit points, um, but again, it's up to you. I learned the hard way here as well, by the way. I almost got killed when I was ratting. Warp core optimizers. It's worth noting that the mower is a very slow ship, realistically. You're not running an afterburner, a micro warp drive, you're not running a warp core stabilizer. And if you were to have a frigate speed tank you effectively, even with your double webs, you might find it difficult to escape, especially if you're getting warp core jammed. So this will save you. Um, from even a minus two warp comm jammer, which I believe are the strongest ones that you can get on the market. I think there's maybe some very expensive minus threes, but uh, having a plus one warp core optimizer on both riggings 
uh, will save you from the majority of warp core jams, which means that you should be able to warp out in, in a sticky situation. So I would thoroughly recommend that you have these two. Um, there are not many great engineering rigs out there, but these are definitely the ones that I have included because I don't want to get jammed and stuck in space. So those that is a, a sort of a complete... Uh, overview of uh, fittings and skills and also a look at the mower in general. Let's now have a brief look at a, a tier 7 anomaly clip. What I want you to focus on here in this tier 7 uh, anomaly clip is actually just the, the sort of the flow of the capacitor and the shield and I'm really just focus on the capacitor and the shield bar throughout this tier 7 anomaly. I'm only doing a medium and I've actually sped the video up to 10 times speed so you're seeing this at 10 times right now. Um, but as you can see, the shield really doesn't take that many hits. The capacitor is stable between about 50 and 60%, and you use the shield battery to provide you with a surplus of capacitor to be able to boost your shields back up to around 100. So you, what you're, you're aiming to do when you're playing a shield tank like this is you want to passively run your adaptive and reactive shield hardeners at all times. You want to maintain around a 15 to 18 kilometer range on the majority of targets. If you get a frigate that comes close to you, or frigates in general, you may want to webify them because it's going to make it that much easier for you to kill uh, those particular targets. And then when you take a bit of damage, which you inevitably will, you're going to use the shield battery, you're going to use the capacitor battery, and then during that capacitor battery, you're going to use the shield booster as much as possible to get back up towards 100% HP. And it's going to be a cycle of using the excess capacitor battery um, energy that you get to then use that to boost your shield. So every time your, um, your capacitor battery is off cooldown, I recommend that you try and use it. I recommend that you start the fight by using the capacitor battery so that you can essentially allow your reactive and adaptive shield hardness as well as your rail guns to eat into the capacitor battery surplus energy rather than eating into your actual capacitor um, and then again you're using that capacitor battery on cooldown to use the shield booster to put you back towards 100% but you can see that you know versus the majority of these anomalies I'm taking very very little damage like like negligible damage the one drawback one of the major drawbacks of this build especially when you're running rail guns is that you're a slower ship you don't have an afterburner to, to create range um and you are in general going to struggle um you're in general going to struggle to clear things as quickly as you would do in, an, in a caracal navy but for null sec where there are not as many stations around and where it's maybe a bit more treacherous to uh transfer between regions um it's just better to have the ability to shield tank things out. So there, that was the that was the uh, anomaly, and I hope you enjoyed the video.